Hey, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Darren. And, and we, we are... are... Breaking, Breaking It Down. down. So, Darren, have you heard of the School to Prison Pipeline? Yeah, what do you know about it? Well, it's a system of policies and practices that push disadvantaged students from schools to prisons. By disadvantaged, do you mean kids who don't have financial support, positive role models, or who are in foster care? Yes. According to the ACLU, there are five major factors that contribute to the pipeline. The first is failing schools. By failing schools, we mean overcrowded classrooms, lack of quality teachers and books, few counselors, and few special education services. In failing schools, some students lose interest, and this leads to high dropout rates. The second factor that contributes to the pipeline are school discipline policies, such as zero tolerance. The zero tolerance policy is the act of applying harsh penalties to minor offenses, like throwing a pencil or bringing scissors to school. These types of disciplinary policies disproportionately affect students of color and students with special needs. The amount of students who have been suspended from school have grown drastically from 1.7 million in 1974 to 3.1 million in 2000, and most of them are children of color. Here's a story about how zero tolerance in schools affected young people in Florida. Dang, that was crazy. Yeah, I know, and right now young people in Florida are organizing to change this. Dream Defenders, check them out. third major factor that contributes to the pipeline is the policing of schools. Yes, some schools maintain discipline by employing school police to patrol hallways. When schools rely more on police than teachers and counselors, it seems as though security is more important in schools than education. Now it's important to remember that students of color and white students may commit the same acts at school, but students of color are more likely to be expelled, suspended, or even arrested. Research shows that in the U.S., 70% of students involved in in-school arrests are referred to law enforcement or Black or Latino. Some schools have scanners and metal detectors for when students enter the building. Although this makes some people feel safer, other students might feel as though they're entering a prison. That leads us to our fourth stop on the school to prison pipeline, disciplinary schools. Disciplinary schools are the step below prison, and some of them have few educational resources. So when students are free to re-enter schooling, they are often left unprepared and undereducated to follow along and keep up with the classes. The fifth factor that contributes to the pipeline is court involvement in juvenile detention. That's right. 80% of students do not have lawyers when they are involved in the court system. Obviously, it's really difficult for students to return to traditional schools after being held in juvenile detention, especially if they don't have advocates. So consider how this affects you. Do you see the school to prison pipeline at work in your school? What are you going to do about it? If you want to help find a solution, check out these organizations and get involved. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Darren. We just broke it down. <clears throat> <laughs>